It's about time I pass the microphone to the second uh, speaker, Kurt Thielen. Uh, hello, Kurt. Let me say hello, some please. words um, about your really impressive uh, bio. Dear Kurt, we are very glad to have you here. Uh, Kurt Tillen is the founder and managing director of Zembra Lucian, one of the biggest digital distributors for music and audiobooks in the world. Tillen started his career working in a record shop uh, in 1979 and was the head of Rough Trade Records and later Zoba Records in Germany, Austria and Switzerland for more than 20 years, working with a wide range of facts from New Order and uh, the Smiths to Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears and uh, Justin Timberlake. That's really impressive. Um, after the company has been sold, he founded Zebralution as the first real digital distribution company in Germany with worldwide focus. In 2007, the Warner Music Group acquired Zebralution. Since 2010, digital audiobook and especially streaming has become an important factor in Zebralution's portfolio. In April 2017, Tillen bought Zebralution back from Warner's together with experienced industry executives. So what else we have to say? It's a really big deal. I, I want to close with uh, this uh, info that um, Kurt Tillen in 2018 was awarded as audiobook person of the year uh, in Germany. So dear Kurt, please, we, we have our ears open to listen to you. Hello from very sunny Berlin today. We have, we have a very lucky day today. It's like uh, uh, sitting here right next to the River Spree and the sun is shining and we have a really good, good day here. As Nopi already um, told you, I'm, I'm an old hand in the, in the music business since uh, 40 years or so, which is really frightening. Um, but it's, uh, it's, um, it's been a really, really good school for me and for what we do now in this, uh, in this company. Um, as you know, we founded Revolution in 2004 as a distributor for independent music, but we already had, um, had audiobooks in our catalog then, but which was not playing such a significant part at the time. In 2010, we partnered with Lübe Audio to explore more possibilities with audiobook. And we started, one of the things we started doing other than um, using download channels, we went to streaming services and started putting on um, um, audiobooks onto streaming services. And the first result we had after putting 50 audiobooks onto the Napster platform at the time as a test, we got back an accounting for 10,000 euro from them for a month. And we all thought, wow, there's something in this. We, this is really, um, um, really exciting and we should really try to go that path. We've, we've, gone on since then with many, many partners in the German and international audiobook industry um, and have built a very successful business out of this. And in 2018, we decided that we'll go into podcast as well to really um, go all the way in audio. So as we represent music, audiobooks and podcast and become what is fairly unique still, an all audio company, which is like what we feel and how we, we present ourselves. Um, I'm always too fast. So I think what would be interesting for you, um, especially in Greece, would be to see the amount of um, outlets we have here, um, which we serve in Germany and elsewhere. Um, there's still some more. Um, 
what I, uh, Corinna already has told you very competently about Audible and who they are and what they do. And they are, so to speak, the top dog in digital, um, digital distribution of audiobooks. They are the top shop in, in the world in this moment. And they offer a download subscription um, service, which means you buy, um, you buy a, an icon, an, an, a, like a coin for, um, to buy an audiobook for 9.99 euro every month. Um, if you if you go for that subscription, um, they are now they're a hundred percent Amazon daughter. So the access to um, to Amazon goes via Audible as well, which is important. Um, they had a deal with Apple Books as well, but that, as Corinna as well uh, pointed out rightly, that exclusive arrangement has gone now and Apple Books are a, a separate partner for us and a very important one because they take audiobook very, very seriously too. So the same with Google. Um, so you see that a lot of our partners are really, really big international um, companies and um, they obviously have their own agenda and their own uh, approach to all these um, these things. Um, quickly coming back to to the question which was well, was put to Corinna, uh, local German platforms. There's not very many. There's Tolino, which is an, an ebook and audiobook platform. Um, um, founded by um, big German retailers, which is probably the, the biggest we have here in this country. Um, but when you look at the competition, obviously it is very international, it's very American focused, and um, it's, uh, it's, it's really huge uh, companies. Um, Bookbeat, Storytel and Nextory are audiobook specialized services too. They all come from Scandinavia. So that's, uh, that's uh, what Corinna um, added as well. Um, BookBeat um, used to be a download subscription, is on a different way now to st uh, streaming as well. Storytel and Nextory are streaming subscriptions, but for audiobooks only. These services play a bigger and bigger role and are in direct competition with Audible. What we have specialized in in the, uh, in the last year, we service all these companies too, all these big retailers too, but what we have specialized as Evolution in the last 10 years is going to companies like Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer or YouTube Music. Um, and I think that might be especially interesting for publishers in Greece, because a lot of the other um, um, shops like BookBeat, like Storytel, like Audible, don't have national outlets in Greece. But there is Spotify, there is Deezer, and there's Apple Music, which um, people have access to. Um, the great thing about all these outlets, the streaming music services, is that they have huge numbers of subscribers. In Germany, we estimate that there's between 12 and 15 million subscribers to um, streaming services. And as we all know, with Netflix and Spotify, young people don't buy CDs anymore. They don't download stuff. Streaming an access model, as we call it, so you have access to your content rather than owning it, is something which, which young people um, absolutely prefer. And they, um, a lot of them don't even understand anymore why they should be owning that stuff, because it's available all the time. The big advantage for audiobook in this is going with Spotify, where we find huge numbers of, uh, uh, of subscribers there, which already have a subscription. So to them, it is an extra medium and they discover it and we open up doors for a new generation of audiobook lovers. What are the rules? What is important in this digital world for, uh, with, for audiobooks? I think 
what is really very important is that you have a broad network so that you go to all the possible stores and don't focus just on one or two so try to to reach as many people as possible um, usually I go to the to the um, convention of the American uh, audiobook publishers uh, which uh, takes place in New York in May every year hardly surprising we couldn't go this year it didn't take place this year but last year the um, the guy who do always does a fantastic presentation of numbers in the audiobook market American audiobook market um, Tom Webster from Forrester Research, when asked about what his main conclusion of all the, um, all the facts he had presented in this year was, was like, go where the people are, go to as many platforms as possible, present your repertoire wherever you can. I think the second important thing is visibility, because if you're in the platforms, and you'll not be like people can't see you in any way. That's a, that's a difficult thing. So for instance, in the streaming services, we built a lot of um, playlists, uh, profiles, and there's features. We have an app um, called Spooks, where you can, which is like a search engine for the, for the streaming services where you can find audiobooks. For instance, in Napster, you don't have a metadata field for, um, for the narrator. But sometimes the narrator is very, very important, especially if it's an important actor, well-known artist. Um, then you want to enable the search for that. But you, in the music services, you can't do that. So we have, we've solved that problem um, by going to, to, to this app, Spooks. What you can do to promote your book, your audiobooks, is connecting to social media. Especially Instagram has become a really important platform. I know your publishers, you know that for books as well. It's the same for audiobooks. Being on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is really important to reach the digital audience, especially. Um, nobody will go from a from a advertising in a print magazine to a, to a digital plat platform that, that way is too long. So you need to go, you need to be one click away from, from a sale or from a stream um, through social media. I think that's really important. The next point is a bit of wishful thinking because it doesn't always happen because of production lead times and possible windowing, so going later with streaming than, than uh, with, uh, with download, for instance, which some publishers still do. But ideally, you want to present your audiobook at the same time as the, the, the print book, the, um, the normal book. Because when you do promotion for it, the, uh, the audiobook benefits from it in the same way as a print book, for instance. And lastly, I think it is really important for you to understand that metadata is the most important thing in the future when it comes to digital sales. You need to tag your, um, your um, uh, releases with meaningful words and you have to be, um, the search needs to find your book. So obviously we are a very experienced company in that and we support our publishers in that. But it is in, in everybody's interest that everybody works on metadata really hard and really uh, precisely because um, that's how you will, will be found in the future in all digital platforms. The digital market, you have heard a lot about the discussions in the music industry about um, the revenues which come from streaming, for instance. Um, and those discussions are still ongoing and some people are not happy about it. Some people are. Um, thing is, at, at, in the end, the music industry was saved by screaming because through the, down, the going down of a physical product, the CD, and by piracy, it was very, very hard for the music industry um, to survive and the music industry nearly shrunk by half. 
in the last four or five years, because of streaming, the music industry has come back and has, has um, experienced a rena renaissance. Um, as I said before, streaming is not the only option, but maybe when I think about Greece, and you know much more about it, the market than I do, obviously, um, that could be a good way to go audio because um, there is big music platforms already there. Here, the models are different. As I said, there's download per list price, like on um, Apple, Apple Books. Um, that's an a la carte model, which works, still works very well here in Germany. Then there's audiobook subscription models, like, uh, like Audible, where there is, where you uh, give them a, a certain price you think about, but there is an, a factor by which we diminish the rate so that they get to 499 or 999 prices. And there's the subscription services where you get paid per track. You get paid very little per track. It's something like half a cent in most cases. But if you have an audiobook which has a hundred tracks, you, that gives you 50 cent. But the number of subscribers brings it up to to a level where it gets really interesting. And you've seen the very useful calculation uh, that Corinna has provided us um, with. So as a rule, the more tracks, the more I get, but you can't do 30 second tracks. You have to play to, according to the rules, to the services and your tracks in Spotify or other streaming services shouldn't be shorter than a, an average music track is. We're talking about three minutes here, right, in the moment. And the, the, the services are looking at that in a, in, a, in a more close way than ever before. Yeah. So what is, as you can see, as, you, as we said before, download uh, stores pay the most per audiobook, but the reach of streaming services um, is, is, makes it very, very attractive. And our top author, um, Jojo Moyes, um, because, of a, because of a book which was made into a movie as well, um, and the, the Khaleesi from Game of Thrones played the title role in it, or the main role in it, which was, and she's very popular. We reached 1.5 million people who read, uh, to, who listened to an, to an audiobook by, Jojo Moyes in German, which is an enormous number which no other service can, can reach. So that's about it. That's really um, what I can add from the distribution point of view. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to answer your questions. And I'm really keen to find out more about the Greek market as well and where you see um, possibilities to go with. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kurt. That was really, really interesting. Uh, very new information for us. Um, many questions. But first of all, I just want to say my question and uh, after all the rest. Um, dear Kurt, do you think that audiobook is the future? I mean, we live in a world full of millions of uh, images mm -hmm. spread around the uh, internet uh, world and space. And uh, some uh, articles speak about uh, this um, image fatigue. Uh, we are, are we tired of uh, images and uh, all this uh, storm of uh, information and we will go back to the pure sound, the words in our ears? What do you think? I think it's, it's not e either or. It will always be a combination, obviously. Um, but like coming from the music business like we looked we stared at youtube for years and years and years and like this is the way it's going and then audio streaming services showed us that there's a, a, a huge demand for just listening to and you know like 
suddenly we found out that you can't really watch a video under the shower or when you're driving a car and that just listening has a total different effect on you and in the in the in the um in the research which was done in the united states of america the surprising thing was that the trend was going from people listening on the commute on the way to work or to university or to to school um that was the, for many years the biggest um, opportunity for people to listen to an audiobook. That has changed over the years, and people do listen in their living rooms or whilst they're preparing a meal to audio because it has an effect of calming. It has an effect of making you feel more comfortable. And I think that's something which we have, we've seen in the pandemic um, as well here in Germany. Uh, kids' repertoire has risen enormously. People don't want to, their kids just to stare at a screen all the time. They want to listen. They want to focus in a different way. I think audiobook is a big part of the future um, and has an excellent future, but it's obviously not the only, uh, the only future there. Yes. I agree with you, uh, but I do believe that um, we start to discover again the magic of uh, the sound of the words in our ears. That, that's a, the real magic. Um, I would like to have uh, more time to discuss with you all these uh, kind of uh, ideas, uh, but uh, we have many, many questions from the participants, and uh, I think we should give them uh, now the word. Uh, the question is, so much growth for audiobooks comes from a streaming uh, subscription nowadays for a new market do you believe that's the way to go to or download to keep can be also an option as i said before i think you you should go every possible way you can i don't know enough about the the greek publishing market to be honest and the audiobook publishing market i know a little about the, the music market and I know people are not particularly buying CDs there. So I would probably not advise anybody to go the physical route in, in, in Greece. Um, but I think whatever the opportunities are, you should, um, um, you should go there. We have some Greek music labels in distribution and they seem to be doing really well on, in streaming. Um, better than in, in download, to be honest. And I think that's a, that's a general trend. And it's, it's very hard for me to say something, you should do this or that in Greece, because you know, you know your market and, your, and the people much better. But it's something we see, you know, like when I, when I look at Latin America, for instance, which was always a different market, difficult market for music and for audiobook. But through the streaming service, the numbers of people paying for um, consumption of music and audiobook has risen so much that it's suddenly a very interesting market. And I could imagine that something like that could be true for Greece as well. How many audiobook titles do you believe are necessary to kick off an audiobook uh, in countries like Greece, uh, population 11 million people? Um, how many one can sell? Is that the question? I it's 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 difficult to tell. Like I, you know, because I'm I've become such an audiobook fan. I've done a very very little publishing um, company myself. We have twenty titles, and we lost probably money on ten of them, and we made money on ten of them. But mm. it's it's um, it's something. Is that a good rate, Corinna? <laughs> 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 Not bad. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I think I'm making it up. It's probably worse. Than, than that. But overall, it's, it's okay. But it's, it's something I think, I don't know what a studio would cost in, in Greece. And I don't know what the, your distribution cost um, is and, and your overhead in Greece. I've, I'm sure that's different from Germany. But I think you should always aim to 
at least get a couple of thousand sales, I think, when it, it starts to become interesting. And these sales in, in, in the streaming world, like is, is 100 tracks is, is a sale, for instance. I think that could be interesting, but it's very difficult for me to tell. What do you think, right. Corinna? We always say um, if you have uh, 1 million streams uh, per audiobook, then, then uh, it's a success. And if it gets more, of course, then uh, better, better. How should publishers approach localizing audiobooks? Example, given translating a book into a different language and producing an audiobook from it, is there something they need to focus on apart from the traditional localizing process? You work with uh, translation uh, books, translated books also, I suppose, not only yes. local. Yeah. Yes, we, um, we get the translation normally uh, by the book publishers uh, or from uh, the translators themselves. And um, yeah, that's, that's normally no, pr no problem. Um, the costs are, are the same. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. Um, we are calculating uh, with this ten uh, percent or this fifty-five percent of uh, the proceeds, um, and um, if it's, for example, a German uh, author, then he gets a little bit more, and uh, if it's, uh, for example, a British author, then of course um, the. Uh, costs for the translation have to be in that. It's the same with the print book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you publish dramatized or not dramatized audiobooks for adult fiction? Um, we usually um, uh, publish only um, non dramatized um, uh, records. But um, we have some uh, audio plays uh, taken from the from uh, broadcasting companies, and um, that's that's quite quite nice. But it's very important, uh, uh, not uh, not only important, but it's uh, it's very um, high, high, with high costs uh, uh, if you if you make a radio play, uh, but. In the children's market, uh, radio plays are very popular, and uh, perhaps Kurt can say something about the three. <laughs> yes, like we we have a lot of uh, dramatized uh, kids content as well, but unfortunately we don't have the biggest one, which is called Die drei Fragezeichen, the three question marks, which is uh, owned by a company called Europa, which goes through Sony Music. And they are, um, the, the, the three question marks are the biggest artists on both Apple and Spotify in Europe. Because mm. every episode of theirs is number one in the charts there. And it's, it's absolutely huge. Um, it's, it's bigger than Ed Sheeran and Beyonce and, and everybody turns over more than, than anybody there. Um, it's quite amazing. But that seems to be a very, very German-centric thing. Whenever I try to explain that to people in the UK or in the United States who have a big audiobook market as well, they just shake their heads and can't, can't believe it. It doesn't work the same. It seems to be a very German thing. Oh, I see. Um, yes, I think it's not the same. Um, for me personally, I believe that uh, classic uh, literature should be dra dramatized, but this is a personal aspect. And uh, maybe in Greece, I don't know how it, this would work. It's, so, it's, very, it's much more expensive. That's the, that's the yeah. big handicap because you obviously need a lot more narrators and the, the studio and everything gets more expensive. But what happens, Corinna, correct, uh, correct me if I'm saying something stupid here, but it happens in Germany a, a lot in cooperation with radio stations, where radio stations pick up part of the costs and then all radio stations produce it and audiobook publishers buy the rights of the radio stations. Is that right, Corinna? That, yeah, that does uh, yeah. That, so we did also, yeah. Yeah. 
also another so maybe uh, that's the way in greece i don't know yes we have to see i don't know either <laughs> do you do you have uh, do you have radio plays uh, uh, do you have radio plays by uh, broadcasting in fact, uh, we used to have, uh, when I was a child, I do remember very well listening a theater plays in the radio. It was very, very popular for many, many years, and I still remember that. And we can still find that uh, on the web uh, now, but I think not now, not really. Mm. They don't produce, they, I mean, we, we have um, an institution, a cultural institution that produced some kind of these uh, things uh, during the Caradine, but it was a very special uh, thing. Um, yes. Mm. But it was very popular ma many years ago. I mean, uh, you know, um, we have to see how this could work today in Greece. Maybe it, would, it uh, could work very well because I can see my son, 12 years old, and uh, he likes very much to be with his mobile and listen and watch, etc. So, okay. Um, let's have another market question. Can you please, uh, both maybe, or uh, one of you, develop on metadata management? What do you recommend? Metadata. I, mean, I think you've built something. <laughs> yeah, we, we were searching for a long time uh, for um, some software house um, for our um, databases, uh, and um, we we couldn't reach. Uh, we could couldn't get along with uh, with a, a um, already. Um, published um, software. So we um, ask an engineer to, to help us. Um, and that's, of course, a little bit uh, more in expensive, but um, I think um, that um, is fast the right way. And um, so, yeah, everyone has to see um, how they get along with that. But um, perhaps there are already some um, some uh, some uh, solutions in in Greece uh, for publishing. Um, we in Germany the solutions were only made for book publishers, and uh, that was a problem. We we couldn't uh, adapt them uh, quite well uh, for our audiobook um, needs. Yeah. It's like a digital warehouse, isn't it, where you keep all mm -hmm. your all your data together, which is a really important thing. We we get them from you because we like you know the the the, the, the audiobook, you know the repertoire, you know the product, and can give us the information, and we then turn it into whatever Spotify or Bookbeat or whoever. Um, uh, what what they need because the metadata for all these stores is different, so we have a translation task there as well. You know? That's the problem, and uh, that's yeah. uh, why we need so much uh, Sebralution to help us in this <laughs> point. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> but we need, we need you even more because we <laughs> wouldn't have anything to do without you. <laughs> Um, I will make a question because, as I can see, the most of uh, the questions are already answered. So I would like to ask, uh, what about podcast? Podcast, I read that maybe is the next uh, plat, is the next form and uh, platform and format. What do you think, Kurt and uh, Corina? Uh, I have no experience in publishing podcasts. Um, until now, I think it's difficult um, to make money with this kind of audio content. But um, Kurt is, a, is very experienced in podcasts. And so yeah. perhaps you tell us yeah, a little we bit have about a, it. We, have, we founded an own company for it, as I said before, Zebra Audio Net. And we, we, we are working on this actively for two and a half years now. And it's important to understand that it's a totally different business model. Podcasts are financed by advertising. So you need to 
Like we needed to reinvent ourselves as an advertising agency in that part of our business. And to be honest with you, like it, it was all going very well. The pandemic doesn't help because a lot of companies froze their advertising budgets. So it was, it was more difficult um, in this year than, than we thought it would have been, but we've still done, done very well, I think, considering the circumstances. But it's something I'm convinced that will be broadening as well, but it's a different format. It's much shorter. It's much more about people chatting with each other. It's much lighter format than audiobook. But again, from the figures I saw in the USA, there's a, there's a close connection. Um, the people who listen to audiobooks very often listen to podcasts and the other way around. So I think the two things are fruits of the same tree in a way. And it's, it's something which I think helps developing audio in total because people start with podcasts go to audiobooks to, to get a different format and especially, and that's the most important thing, and that's the beginning of your presentation, Corinna, stories are what counts in the end. Mm -hmm. you know? Dear Corinna Zieber, dear Kurt Thielen, thank you so much. It was very much interesting and uh, I do hope that uh, next May, maybe, uh, everything. Uh, if everything is okay till then, uh, we'd like to meet you at the Thessaloniki Book Fair at the Thessaloniki grounds, and um, why not uh, next October to the Frankfurt Book Fair? 